You ever play in a video game and then you run into a boss fight that you're like, damn, I wish I had unlimited potions. I wish I had unlimited money. Broke as hell in this game. Then you go online and look up a hack and your cybersecurity flags raise through the roof. Like that's a virus. Today, I'm going to show you the easiest way to alter game data without downloading any viruses, without downloading these sketchy files that you know are just going to turn your computer into. Let's jump right into it. Preface, this will not work in online games like Call of Duty. If you want to get unlimited COD points in Call of Duty, or you're looking to get unlimited gems in Clash Royale, still, this ain't gonna work for you. This is strictly for games that don't have anti-cheat databases for the data that we're trying to alter, and more strictly for single player games. Such games include Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, stuff like that. Today, we're gonna be using this on a game called Sekiro. I downloaded Sekiro like two weeks ago, and I was like, wow, this game is just too hard. Now, what are we doing today? Today, we're using Cheat Engine. Now, if you're not familiar with Cheat Engine, you're going to be blown away. Cheat Engine alters the memory addresses of certain data in an application. The conflict with online games is that they use these dynamic databases to store data. You're not going to find the memory address of your COD points in Call of Duty because they're hashed around in some off-site data that's not linked to the game file that you have. The way that Cheat Engine works is that it does a pointer search on the data that you're trying to change. This means that it does a cross-reference scan of the data in your game with an input that you give it. But these values can change. So by knowing that Cheat Engine only works for games that are standalone and use static data, I hope you have a better idea of what games that you can use it for. My general rule of thumb is don't try to change data in a game if it's going to give you an unfair advantage over other players. But if you're just playing by yourself, then it's most likely going to work. And it's also ethical. Cheat Engine is only used for ethical and personal uses, so don't be trying to do anything malicious with it. I use Cheat Engine to change attributes in a game when they get too difficult, you know? Oh, what the f No, no, oh my fucking god. For the love of fucking that all is But enough of that, let's get into actually how to use Cheat Engine. First, you're going to want to find a value that you want to change. The easiest values that you can change are things like your health bar, the amount of money you have, or like the skill points if there's a skill tree in the video game. I'm just going to do a basic one. I'm going to do the gold that I have in Sekiro. So we hop into Sekiro and you see that we have 491 gold. I then open Cheat Engine and if you see we click this little icon right here and it opens up all of the applications that we have open right now. The first thing you want to do is the initial scan. So in this box I type 491 and I scan because that's how much gold we have right now. Now here's where Cheat Engine's magic comes into play. After switching the value of our gold in-game to 481 by just purchasing something, Cheat Engine is going to take this second scan and cross-reference it with the items that we first scanned as 491. This will narrow down the values of things that just went from 491 to 481. Whichever address was changed from 491 to 481 most likely is responsible for holding the value of our gold. After doing a second scan, we see that we went from from a whole list of stuff to just three items. See, we're narrowing it down. I like to do as many scans as possible because this will narrow it down as much as possible, right? If you have a small amount of things though, like let's say you have one skill point and you're trying to turn it into 900 skill points, it's gonna be difficult because your one skill point can only go like one way, you know, it can go to zero skill points and then you can't change that value anymore. If I'm gonna change my skill points, I wanna make sure I have like at least five because it can go to four, narrow it down, three, narrow it down, and then on. So after doing a third scan with 471, we see that it's not going to be narrowed down any further. There are three different addresses here, but one of them specifically contains our actual gold amount. This can sometimes get tricky because multiple addresses may mean that there's an address just for displaying the amount of gold you have and an address for how much you have in the game's database. You'll see what that means in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to just select all three of them and we're going to change the value of all three of them from 471 to 9999 if you see this little active box down here what this means is it will lock the value which means that even after you change it in game from 9999 like let's say buying something it'll lock it to 9999 again I would avoid doing this because some games 
such as this one even, will crash. You have 99999, but you just bought something and now it's back to 99999 instantly. It's going to start to cache that and become really confused and then just give up. So when we get back into the game, it says that we have 471, but once we change the value, i.e. buying the spirit emblem, it's going to display the real value we have, which after the purchase is 9989. As you can see, I'm just doing an absurd amount of purchasing just to show you that the value is in fact still up there. Even through going through different menus of the game, it's still going to save. If you see though, when I exit this menu and start playing the actual game, in the bottom right, there is a value of 491, which like I said before, some addresses contain like display information about your currency. So I hope this short tutorial opens some doors for if you want to play around with uh, ethically hacking some of your favorite games. I've used this on the older Far Cry games. I'm not sure if games like Far Cry 6 will allow this because of the co-op capabilities. Like I said, online games are just a no-go for this. It's not fair to try to gain an advantage against someone. If you're playing games with your friends, just play it the right way. But if you're in these single player games and you might be f no! then this hack is for you. I'm currently working on my variety chat GPT application and once that's at a good spot to show you guys, I will be uploading a video on that. But I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one.